In this video we are going to take a closer look at the second balance status laid of 10th edition as well as the most recent version of the Monitorum field manual for Warhammer 40k, both of which were released by the end of January. In the first part we will go through all the relevant changes for the Death Watch in 10th edition. In the second part, we will then look at what this potentially means and how we can best adjust our Death Watch list to accommodate these changes. Lastly, there will be my personal conclusions and a quick wrap up of what has been covered. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. Well guys, let's get the bad news out of the way, this has been yet another zero round for the Death Watch. While the first balance status laid of 10th edition had brutally butchered the special issue ammunition stratagems of our unique detachment, this second release now simply corrected the list of bolt weapons, something that had already been present in the official lab anyway. As such, the old issues of these mentioned stratagems remain, as well as the absence of battle tactic stratagems beyond Armor of Contempt that could still make use of a Captain Zero CP cost ability. This is quite unfortunate, and I think especially in the light of the devastating wounds change being here to stay, I think our special issue ammunition stratagems should be completely rebalanced. Anyway, I guess a small comfort is that Tomb of Ectoclades remains as it is with the full rerolls, making this one a very powerful enhancement and certainly one of the reasons to go with the Black Spear Task Force. Then moving on to the Monitorum Field Manual version 1.6, here the Death Watch gets another zero round, with all our unique data sheets remaining unchanged. Anyone who was hoping for points drops for the Proteus kill team or the Watchmaster has certainly been disappointed, myself included. To make matters worse, GW has been dropping points for battleline units, which means intercessors, assault intercessors and heavy intercessors have all seen points drops, and even the Sternguard veterans, who previously paid for their early 10th edition sins with heavy nerfs, have gone down in points. However, Deathwatch veterans, our unique battleline unit, remains at the increased cost of 110 points for 5 models, further falling behind the alternatives. Then further on the generic Space Marine data sheets, we have Outriders going down quite significantly at 5 points per model and the Inferno squad getting the same points drops as Intercessors. On the other hand, well-performing Space Marine units like Aggressors, Inceptors, Redemptor Dreadnoughts, Scouts and the Whirlwind all went up in points, though it has to be said that at least Inceptors and Scouts had it long coming for them. While both of these remain viable, I personally doubt that we will continue to see them in as high numbers as before. Then on a side note, Centurion Devastators also went up in points, no doubt paying the price for some Ultramarines Vanguard detachment shenanigans, which I personally think is unfortunate. These models had a long history of not being played, and I thought that it was great to see them return to the competitive battlefield. Either way, I think what stands out here for the Death Watch is that even though several models that are part of kill teams had their points changed, all kill teams remain at their old values. To be more specific, for the forest kill team, both intercessors and outriders went down in points, which means that taking a minimum sized forest kill team is now overpriced by 44% for worse rules, and the formerly most points efficient variant with two outriders and three hellblasters would now overpay by 10%. While this skill team was severely lacking in terms of rules and unit compositions to begin with, I think we can safely say now that this has been sent to the dumpster for good. Moving on to the Indometer kill teams, where things become a bit more interesting. 
while heavy intercessors went down in points, both aggressors and inceptors went up respectively. While we would now overpay by 5% for a minimum sized squad of 5, when going for the optimal 10-man combo of 5 heavy intercessors, 2 aggressors, 2 inceptors and 1 eradicator, we get a 9% discount over the regular datasheet equivalent. This is an actual increase of the 7% discount that we got before, so this remains a viable option. As mentioned before, the Proteus kill team remains as overpriced as ever, and I think that the only kill team to ever consider as a 5-man version at this point is the Spectre's kill team, which comes with an interesting redeployability, and is only 5% points increase over regular infiltrators, at the cost of Omni Scramblers, but still, at least this one can see play. Either way, GW really needs to look into these kill team values and move away from pricing the 5 man versions at half the price of the 10 man. It just doesn't make sense given that the initial 5 models are set in stone. With the basic rules and points changes out of the way, what does this mean for the Death Watch? Well, the short answer is that we have been overlooked once again, leaving us with overpriced kill teams and butchered special issue ammunition. I think in the light of the heavy nerfs from the previous status late, several Deathwatch players, myself included, have been looking into detachment options outside of our unique Blackspear task force, and the bad news here is that basically several good Space Marine units have been nerfed, while none of our unique datasheets have been boosted. As such, I think the small comfort that we can take away from this is that other marine armies or detachments have gotten it versus this update, and it might be time to re-evaluate our Black Spear task force, which retains the powerful Tomb of Ectoclades, and I also think Teleportarium is an excellent stratagem. For our kill teams, the Indometer kill team remains quite the bargain, and is also the only kill team that still synergizes well with the special issue ammunition stratagems. The Proteus kill team is quite overpriced, but it is difficult to argue against a 10-man brick supported by a Judicier or an Apothecary. Me personally, I am still very much into Vindicators, which remain untouched, and I think especially now that whirlwinds have gone up so heavily in points, a Vindicator or two remain my default go-to pick for vehicles. For anyone interested in returning to our Black Spear Task Force detachment, I included three well-performing lists from the recent LVO tournament in the description. For reference, Paul Quinn went 5-1, while both Joseph Salt and Zachary Franci went 4-2 playing Deathwatch with the Black Spear Task Force detachment. While all of these lists have been negatively affected by the points changes, I think the overall list concepts are still worth taking inspiration from. All in all, I think that these are bleak times for the Deathwatch, with the majority of kill teams either remaining overpriced or straight out unplayable as their 5-man version. I really wish that GW would take a better look at our points costs in the next Monitorum Field Manual and preferably revert some of the nerves done in the previous balance data slate. On that note, I really like how GW added a new detachment for Drukari in this balanced status lane to not leave them hanging until they get their new 10th edition codex. One can only pray to the God Emperor to get some similar treatment for the Death Watch. Anyway, my personal recommendation would be to give the Black Spear detachment another shot capitalizing on the powerful Tomb of Ectoclades and both our Indometer and the Proteus kill teams with fitting character support. I suppose it is a small comfort that some other Space Marine lists have just gotten it worse. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have looked at the release of the second balance status late and another update to the Monitorum Field Manual for Warhammer 40k 10th edition and what it means for the Death Watch. Unfortunately, this has been yet another zero round for the Death Watch, 
with the balanced status slate only fixing the list of bolt weapons, still allowed in combination with special issue ammunition, but leaving the stratagems themselves butchered as they were. For the point specifically, all unique Deathwatch datasheets remain the same, while some of the more powerful generic Space Marine datasheets like Inceptors, Scouts and Whirlwinds have seen points increases. GW also made an attempt to rebalance some battle line units, like the Intercessor line of models, yet they not only overlooked our Deathwatch veterans, but they also did not change the kill team points costs. This means that for now all 5-man variants remain overpriced, with only the Spectre's kill team worth even considering, and for the 10-man versions only the Indometer retains a very welcome 9% in its most optimal combo, while we are overpaying for every other kill team. With the nerves to some of the more powerful Space Marine data sheets, I think it might be time for the average Deathwatch player to give a second look at our unique Black Spear Task Force, where we keep the powerful Tomb of Ectoclades, and even though a shadow of its former glory, our kill teams at least provide some synergy with the majority of the stratagems. That aside, I guess we are in for a very long wait. Hang in there, brothers of the long witch -il. So that's it for the release of the second balance status late, and another update to the Monitorum Field Manual for Warhammer 40k 10th edition, and what it means for the Death Watch. What do you guys think about the lack of changes, and how do you rate the Death Watch nowadays? Any major changes you are going to do to your lists? Let me know in the comments. Then finally, if you made it this far and I still have your attention, if you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated, as it helps me invest into future videos. For that, I have both a coffee as well as a Patreon page, links are in the description. Furthermore, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page, where I will be posting links to my videos, as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. As always, thank you very much for watching guys, your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.